not vex him. The enemy will not touch him. What? The anointing. But people who want the anointing are in trouble because they're going to end up to be fanatics without knowing the Holy Spirit, fanaticism results. So when you see the Holy Spirit as power or influence, then you want to use him. But when you see him as a divine person, you want him to use you. Because now you see how beautiful he is. One worthy of adoration, worship, faith, surrender. Now, this blessed person, when we see him as a holy, wise, mighty, tender, how easy it's to surrender to someone like that when you know it. And when you see him like that, oh dear God, your life will be transformed. So, the Holy Spirit is a real person. Now, a real person, just like Jesus himself, a real person, ever present, loving, mighty, always ready to help. But the Word of God says something powerful about the Spirit of God. Number one, 1 Corinthians 2. Let's read it together. I'm going to start reading at verse 10. Let me go back to verse 9. As it is written, I have not seen, nor ear hath heard, now that I have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them. So people talk about, oh, you know, things that I have not seen or heard. No, no, no. The Bible says the Holy Spirit has revealed them. Heaven is not going to reveal things we don't know now. If you know the Holy Spirit, you'll have no surprises in glory. But God hath revealed them by His Spirit. Catherine used to say, the saddest thing for some Christians will be when they get to heaven and find out how much they missed down here. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, verse 10, for the Spirit searcheth the things, searches all things, mm -hmm. yet the deep things of God. Now here you see something about Him. He has knowledge. Knowledge. Intellect. When, when, when He's searching, that's intellect. Yes. The Holy Spirit has intellect. You can't search otherwise. <laughs> but God has revealed unto us by a spirit, for the spirit searcheth the deep things. Mm -hmm. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit in him, even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit. So he knows. That's intellect. The word of God makes it clear by the word search and knoweth that. But the Spirit of God has intellect. Now, verse 12 says, We have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Hmm. Which things we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but the Holy Spirit teaches. So, here you see, the Holy Spirit not only has intellect, but in that verse and portion, we see he has will. He has decision making that to search, to know, to look for. That's will. And the word of God goes on to tell us something so incredible about him. Not only does he have will, he has love, emotions. Romans 15, 30 says the love of the spirit. And so we see from that scripture and Romans 8, 27, that says the mind that God knows the mind of the spirit. He prays with us, for us with groanings, for God knows the mind of the spirit. And the word mind includes thoughts, purpose. So here you see in these amazing scriptures, 1 Corinthians 2, Romans 8, 27, about him being intercessor. Romans 15, 30. But the Spirit of God has intellect, will, emotions. Now, I'm going to say something. Angels 
are not persons. Mm -hmm. Because angels have no emotions. They have will, they have intellect, but no emotions. No angel has ever looked up and said to God, I love you. No angel ever heard God say, I love you with an everlasting love. And they're limited in knowledge because they cannot receive revelation truth. Angels do not know God. I'm going to say that clear. No angel knows the Lord. They know him only by watching you. Wow. Yeah, wow is right. I'm going to show it to you. Ephesians 3.10, turn to it. Ephesians 3.10. It says, everything the angels know about God, they know by watching you, the church. You Ooh. are the school they attend. Shall I say it again? Yes. You are the school angels attend. <laughs> Ephesians 3.10, to the intent now, unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, by the church, God's wisdom. Yes. To the intent that now, it's on the screen for you, those that don't have a Bible. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. The manifold wisdom of God. Meaning that the angels don't know God. They only know him through watching you. The way he deals with you. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yes. So why do they cry holy, holy, holy? They cry holy when they see him touch you. Wow. Every time God will say, holy. Wow. If he heals you, holy. If he blesses you, it in response to what he does in your life. Hallelujah. I think right now you ought to have a praise break. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everything the angels know, everything the angels know about God, they know by watching the way he deals with us. Now, angels, you cannot say an angel is a person because he is not a person. He doesn't have any emotions. His will is limited. His knowledge is li also limited. And he can't receive revelation truth. No angel, including the evil ones, had they known, had they known, they wouldn't have to have, have crucified the Lord. Even Satan doesn't know. Because had he known, why would he fulfill prophecy? Angels, including the devil himself, does not understand prophecy. Because prophecy is revealed only to the church by the Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit is a person. Now, you cannot say a dead body is a person. When my mom passed, we didn't say person because the person is gone. The Spirit goes. And believe me, I've only seen one person go to heaven, and that's my mom. And I was holding her hand, and I knew when she went. You could feel the life leave her body. Well, the person leaves, now it's a shell. It's an empty shell. All your body is, is your tent. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bible calls it tabernacle. It's your tent. So don't, don't cry over the tent when it goes. It's only a tent. The person is gone. So you cannot look at a casket and say person. That's not a person, it's a dead body. The person, gone. The Holy Spirit is a person. God the Father is a person because God the Father also intellect, emotions, will. Jesus is a person because he has intellect and will, emotions, even though he has a physical body. The Holy Spirit is a person and his body is you. Yes, God the Father has a body, spirit body. Moses saw his back. He didn't see his face. We will see his face one day. But God the Father does not have a body of flesh. Only Christ Jesus is flesh. The Holy Spirit, his body, is we. We're his body. Amen. So when we see him, I believe you will. But we are still his body. We'll not get into that. Now, the Holy Spirit, a person, you have to know the person. So, here we see... 1 Corinthians 2 and Romans 8, 27 and Romans 15, 13. He has intellect with emotions. Now let me just go on here. In Romans 15, 30, it talks about the love of the Spirit. 
Think about how many times you thanked the Lord God, the Father, for his love. Or how many times have we thanked the Son for his love? How often do we thank the Spirit for his love? The Father loves us so much, he gave his Son. His Son loves us so much, he died for us. The Holy Spirit loves us so much, he drew us. Think about the love of the Spirit going after you in a bar going after you into a theater. Think about before you were saved, how God convicted you of sin for years, going with you to places that you yourself probably did not enjoy being in. But the Holy Ghost went with you there. Convicting you that that place you were in was the wrong place. Or having relationships and all such things happening in your life. And the Holy Ghost there convicting you it's wrong. Think about his love to have to go with you to those dirty places just to bring you home. The Father so loves us, he tells Jesus to die for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his son. The Lord Jesus loved us so much to pay the price. The Holy Ghost is still paying the price. He's, he's the one who convicts and draws to the cross. Now, the word of God says something marvelous about it. Nehemiah 9.20, please. Just put it for me on the screen to make life simpler. Nehemiah 9.20 talks about the Spirit's goodness. He's all love and goodness. What it says, your good spirit. Yeah, put, if, if you can, Nehemiah 9.20. If not, I'll read it myself from my Bible. But you've sent your good spirit to instruct them, is what the word says. The good spirit, the Holy Spirit, all goodness, all love is the Holy Ghost. This blessed, wonderful person, full of love and goodness. And the Word of God shows us His love. In Ephesians 4.30 we read, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed. Grieve the Holy Spirit, the person who dwells in our hearts. The Holy Spirit, who sees every act we perform, every word we speak, he hears it, every thought we think, he knows it. Yes. The Spirit of God, think about every act, every word, every deed, every impure, unholy, unkind, selfish, untrue things you say or think, this precious person is deeply grieved by because he's living inside of you. The words, grieve not the Holy Spirit, may these words sink deep in us today. Because he knows you better than you know yourself. He's one living inside of you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body was, was your tent. It's no longer your tent. It's his temple now. And the Holy Spirit is in you. I want to show you something. Can I get two, uh, two bottles and a glass? Tim and, and, and Marie, would you give me that? Would you people do me a favor? Would you point at your, at your body? Come on, point at your body. Say this. This is, is my tent. My tent. Say it again. This is my tent. Okay, now I'm going to show you something. Uh, can, can you get one more of those bottles? Oh, this is marvelous. <laughs> okay, let's suppose, yeah, why don't you come here, please, you and Marie. Let's just suppose this glass is your tent, your body. Prior to salvation, your spirit man, like this water in this glass, filled your tent. But your spirit man, a combination of soul and spirit, for the Bible makes it clear that the soul is part of the spirit and only the word can divide both. So, your spirit man, like this water, was lifeless, dead. Not dead completely because if it was dead, you could not have been alive. 
but dead unto God, meaning you 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 could not know God, see God, love God, worship God, serve because <clears throat> the spirit was there. The minute you were saved, this bottle symbolic of the Holy Ghost, he the spirit came and mingled himself with your spirit. Amen. Now can you separate these waters? No. Neither can you separate the Lord from the spirit of man. The scripture says in Corinthians, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. He who is joined is one spirit. The minute the Lord and you become one, it's impossible to separate you. You cannot even see who's who anymore. Mm -hmm. Now say after me, the Lord, the Lord and, me. and me. Now when you say me, we don't mean body, huh? In fact, say this after me. Say, I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. What are you? I'm a spirit. spirit. What are you? A spirit. Say, I have a soul. I have a soul. What are you? Spirit. 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 Ah, you're not spirit. a soul. I just said, I'm, I'm checking you out. <laughs> say, I'm a spirit. I'm a spirit. What are you? Spirit. Now say, I have. I have. A soul. A soul. So what are you? A spirit. Ah, good. But you have a soul. You're, you're not a soul. You have one. <laughs> now say, I live. I live. In a body. In a body. So here's who you are. You're a spirit. Living you have body. a soul. And live in a body. Now say, I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I'm not a soul. I'm not a soul. I am a spirit. I am a spirit. I have a soul. I have a soul. I'm not a soul. I'm not a soul. I have one. I have one. I'm not a body. I'm not a body. I live in one. I live in one. Good. Now, you're a spirit. The Holy Spirit and the spirit of man became one in salvation. Now point at your at your body here. Say, this body, this body is the temple, is the temple of, the Holy Spirit. of the Holy Spirit. This body, this body is, the temple is the temple of one person, of one person not, two. not two. Ah, you got it. That means this body now is no longer yours. It's his. Amen. And the Bible doesn't say that my body is the temple of two spirits. The Holy Only one spirit. So point at yourself. See this body. This body is the house. Is the house of one spirit. Of one spirit. Not two spirits. Not two spirit. One spirit. One spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So, since this body is the body of one spirit, then what happened to my spirit? He's still there, but you can't see him. Hmm. He is hid in Christ. Amen. Wow. That's what it says in the scriptures. I in them and they in me, John 17, that they may be made perfect in one. So your oneness is unbelievable. Amen. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit who dwells in your body. Now this person, since he is in you, he knows you better than you know you. <laughs> So when it says grieve not the Holy Spirit, think about that he is there watching every act, hearing every word, knowing every deed, knowing the impure thoughts, the unholy acts, the unkind acts, the selfishness, the untruth, and all this grieves him he's in there watching it all. Mm -hmm. That's why I say me these words. Grieve not the Holy Ghost, now sing deep because he's watching you. Now, the word of God, 1 Corinthians 2.10, one more time, please look at it. It says that he knows and he seeks and reveals the deep depth of God himself. He searches all that for you. So, when the Holy Spirit is searching God, He reveals Him to us. In other words, He begins to speak to our depth. Remember, He's one with you, so He's talking to you spiritually. The Holy Spirit doesn't talk to your brain, because He's a part of your spirit. He's one with your spirit. Spirit talks to spirit. Deep talking to deep. 
That's called the witness of the Spirit. That's how you know you're saved. You don't know you're saved mentally. That's impossible. You know you're saved by the Spirit. Your Spirit witness. That witness is the voice of the Spirit. Are you listening? Yes. So by the witness of the Spirit, I know I'm born again. I, I don't have to be convinced by some TV program. By the Spirit's witness, I know there is a heaven. No one has to convince me by telling me he's been there and come back. I don't care. By the Spirit, I know the Word of God is His Word. I don't, I don't have to go to school to be convinced. In fact, many schools will destroy me. I know it by the Spirit. Are you listening? So if someone comes to you with a gun and points the gun at your head and says, Deny Jesus or die. You say shoot because our salvation is more real than anything in life but how did we know we're saved who told us an angel no did we read a book no did the bible tell us no the holy spirit told us using the scriptures ah, big difference the bible that doesn't speak to us the spirit of god speaks to us through the word many people know the bible and don't know the lord Many go to school and know the Bible real good as the heathens. They've denied the word. Why? Because it's not the Logos word. It's him, the word. It's the Lord. It's the spirit of God that reveals the scriptures. And the Bible is not about history. The Bible is not about prophecy. It's not about poetry. It's about the master. The greatest revelation God ever gave me is the Bible is a revelation of Jesus. Yes. From beginning to end. When I saw it, it changed my life. How many times can you read about Adam and Eve and the fall and, and Noah and the ark and uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob? Come on, we all know it. But when you see the Lord, I got to tell you this. You people have got to hear this. It took me 14 years before I found that. 14 years after I got saved. I began to look for the Lord in every act. Example. One day I thought to myself, how many, and I was reading Joseph. I said, how many times can you read about Joseph? And finally the Lord said, it's me. And then I saw the Lord. And it just changed my life. Joseph, loved by his father. That's not Joseph, that's Jesus. Hated by his brothers. That's not Joseph, that's Jesus. Joseph put in a pit. That's not Joseph. That's the death of Jesus. Joseph put in a prison. That's not Joseph. That's Christ going to the underworld. Joseph comes out of prison. That's not Joseph. That's the resurrection. Joseph sits at Pharaoh's right hand. That's not Joseph. That's the son of God's exaltation. Joseph given a Gentile wife. That's not Joseph. That's the church coming to Christ. Suddenly you see the life of Joseph is now Jesus and suddenly Joseph disappears. The Bible is all about the Lord. Are you people listening? Yes. Every feast, the Lord. Every color, the Lord. Everything in the Bible about the Lord. Even the genealogies, it's all about the Lord. I'm going to show you something tomorrow, not tonight. I'm going to show you the 10 names in Genesis 5. I'm going to show you Jesus in every name. He'll blow your head off. If you translate the names from Adam to Noah, it's a revelation of Christ. But most Christians have no clue. If you translate from in Hebrew, the 10 names of Genesis 5, it's Jesus just shows up in all those names. It's the Lord, it's all about the Lord. But who reveals this? The Spirit. Amen. Yes. The Holy Spirit is sold on Jesus. Now this Holy Spirit is so precious that the Bible says he searcheth the deep things of God and reveals them to us. So Revelation 2, 7 says the voice of the Spirit. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He is revealing the Lord continually, daily in your life and my life. And then not only that, but the Bible says he's always crying out. Galatians 4, 6. Abba Father. So who's praying in here? Now you praying, he's praying. Think about this, saints. This is so marvelous. Romans 8, 26, it says, 
that the Spirit prays with groanings that cannot be uttered. He intercedes for the saints according to the will of God with groanings that can't be uttered. So here's the Spirit of God, the one I've been talking about, who's living in you, who knows you better than you know yourself, who sees every act, thought, and so forth. Praying, Abba. I'm not saying Abba, he's saying Abba. And the Bible says he intercedes, Romans 8, 26, 27, with groanings, as it says, Abba. So here's the Spirit of God interceding through me. And the Bible in Hebrews 7, 25 says, Christ Jesus intercedes for me. Wow. One intercedes through me and one intercedes for me. How can I fail? How can I be defeated? No way. I have an intercessor in me and one for me in glory. And the Bible says he makes intercession for the saints, the Holy Spirit, according to God's will. Yet Jesus in Hebrews 7, 25, intercedes for us. Think about one, literally, a divine person in you and, 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 and one in, in the presence of God himself. One from the depth of your being, intercedes for you from your depth and yet this precious person who intercedes for us testifies of Jesus John 15 26 says he is the witness I'm not testifying he's testifying he's the one speaking through me praying through me literally cr crying Abba Father Galatians 4 interceding with groanings I can't myself pray and utter and this same person is testifying through my life. I'm not the testifier. He's the testifier. All I am is giving my vessel to you. Make it available in his, for, for his service. And then John 14, 26 says he's my teacher. Mm -hmm. Not only does he help me, testifies through me, intercedes for me. Now he helps me understand truth. That blessed person daily teaching me day by day. What a divine teacher. Not only is he a teacher, he's a leader. Huh? Romans 8, 14, we are led by the Spirit. Yes. He takes us by the hand, gently leads us, walks with us. Not only is he a teacher and a leader, but the Bible says he's the one who will prevent us from going out of God's will in our lives. Think about him protecting you from missing God's will. Acts 16, 6 and 7 clearly states that God, the Holy Spirit, kept Paul from missing God's will. He could have gone somewhere else. The Spirit said, you're not going there. I want you to go there. Why? Protecting us from making a mistake in our ministry and life. Acts 16 is clear. He protects us from missing the will of God. What a blessed person. How I need him. The Bible tells me not only do I, is he keeping me from missing God's will more than that. John 16 verse 7, all oh, this is marvelous. He's the one who has taken the place of Christ on earth. It was important for Jesus to leave in John 16, 7. The Lord said it's necessary, it's most important that I should go. It's expedient. Because when I go, he'll come, the comforter will come. And if, if, if I let go, he's the coming. Now listen, before I close, Jim, real gently, please. I want to ask you the question before I close this message. If you were there with the apostles and you saw Jesus raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse lepers, if you saw Jesus walk on water, commanding the stone to be still, would it change your life? My answer is no, because it did not change that life. Think about that. The disciples saw him, heard him, saw the miracles. But when Jesus died, they all forsook him, began to question if he's Messiah. All the miracles meant nothing. Why? Because it's not by mind nor by power. Can I say that again? All the miracles, all the signs, all the wonders meant nothing. It didn't change nobody's hearts. 
They saw the power of God. Think about seeing Jesus calm the storm, walk on water, raise the dead, and you now, when he dies, you think, oh, maybe he's not the Son of God. How can you question that? Because no Holy Spirit yet. Without the Holy Spirit, nobody could believe, even though they saw the signs and wonders. Think about Peter, James, and John, man of transfiguration. Jesus changes. I mean, his whole appearance changes. He becomes brighter than bright, whiter than white. The glory of God is there. The cloud of glory and the voice of God, this is my son. And they still question if he's Messiah. Wow. You say, why? Because the Holy Ghost was in there. That's why. Without the Holy Spirit, all those experiences meant nothing. That's why it says it's not by might or power. Think about everything Jesus did. Might, power. Everything he said. Everything. All the miracles are might and power. But it's not by might or power. But by my spirit, said the Lord. So when the Holy Spirit came, everything changed. Why? Because it's the Holy Spirit who changes the hearts of man, not Jesus. Please hear it. Jesus could not change the hearts of men. He could not change his own disciples' hearts. One denies him. Another betrays him. Others run home and say, maybe he wasn't the son of God. He, he included his own cousin, Cleopas. No one was convicted by sin when the Lord preached. Think about the Lord Jesus preaching and no one says, what must I do to be saved? No conviction. Why? The Holy Ghost was in there. I think the most shocking verse in the Bible, I think, to me, is in Matthew. Jesus rose from the dead, and those boys, some of them, doubted. Doubted? How can you doubt? Because the Holy Ghost was in there. Even if Jesus rose from the dead, it means nothing without the Holy Ghost. Are you people listening? Yeah. It's not by mind, no power. Without the Holy Spirit means nothing. But when the Spirit came, a fisherman preaches and 3,000 say, oh, what must I do? Why? He convicts of sin. The Lord himself did not convict them. The Spirit convicted them. That's why he said, it's better for you that I leave. If Jesus stayed on earth, You'd have to go to Jerusalem today and see him and make an appointment and stand in a long line. See him one by one for half a second. But by the Spirit, he's yours 24 hours a day. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Lord. Yes. Now stand up.